to our two speakers. So they're going to share the 45 minute slot um, and share with us kernel address space isolation. So of course we have folks that are working on both VM documentation and security and virtualization. Um, so first up, uh, Alexander is working at Oracle on Linux kernel virtualization and their security team. Uh, time spent with Spectre and Meltdown. Um, new to Linux and x86, but 20 years in development virtualization, uh, previously Solaris and Spark. And joining him, uh, and I'm not gonna tell you the last name, I apologize, I'll let you do that. Um, <laughs> Mike, um, uh, who longtime uh, user of Linux, re more recent contributor, maintaining the mem block and looking after boot time memory, uh, focusing on documentation on the VM and subsystem and working in kernel page tables. So uh, again, they've got about 20 minutes each. Um, questions towards the end preferred. And with that, I'm gonna turn the time over to you. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna start. Uh, so this presentation is about some, some idea that I've been clicking around about uh, trying to tweak the kernel page table uh, to make a more secure environment in some contexts in particular around virtualization containers and virtual machines. Uh, so this is legal stuff from Oracle. You can ignore, but it says I'm not committing to anything. And I may say something wrong because I'm a newcomer to Linux, so feel free to educate me too. Um, so VM and containers, they rely on a secure host scanner. They, because the host scanner has access to all the memory, they can have secret, you can have encryption key. Uh, the kernel also have, can have data from other VM and container. So we need a very secure host scanner, and this is uh, what all the cloud uh, provider are fearing is that there is an attack on the, from a VM to a host and we are able to gather data from other VM or containers. So we should be safe because in theory, VM and containers, they cannot access this data. But we have seen recently that they can in some cases. Uh, there's been some derivative of the Spectre attack, like the L1TF and MDS, which have shown that, in particular, the hyper thread are not safe and we can collect data from the other thread. So this is, this is a major concern about security and, clo and cloud. So the idea is, can we limit these damages? If there is, uh, um, um, is the access is compromised, can we restrict the view that we have the data of the compromised uh, source so that we don't have visibility of the entire kernel and, and all the data. Um, the issue is that the, not the issue, it's, it's the way it is today. The kernel uses single address space. So all the kernel components have the same view of the kernel. So if you're breaking from one component, you can access anything in the kernel. We also know that unmapped memory is harder to access because yeah, there's no mapping, so you don't know where to go. Um, I'm talking specifically about mapping and not mapping protection, because we have seen in some cases like Meltdown that you can, during the speculation, uh, memory, um, mapping protection is not necessarily taken into account. So you can, if your mapping is done with a protection, it's possible to override it. That's only true for a present entry. If you guarantee the entry doesn't become present, you can't do it. Yeah. I'm just saying it's not, it's stronger than what you're saying. Okay. M Meltdown only lets you on a populated entry do that. Mm. No, 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 it's, 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 it's property for your one. It, it, it doesn't work quite like that. But, but still, it's see that there are some cases from um, what I Intel is saying is that you where need you a populated TLB to have it. So if you order your events so that you cannot populate the TLB because you're going from a less secure to a more secure mapping, hmm. you can have that. Yeah. It's, it's a feature. Okay. Um, um, yeah, we, we, so page tables seem a, a good fit because, um, and the mapping, because it, it is enforced by the VMU, so that's non-reliable solution. 
uh, to currently isolate the kernel and the process. And it's enforced here during speculation. So the idea is can we change some of the kernel mapping in certain contexts so that we can um, have a better protection from s for some data by having a restricted mapping. Uh, one idea I'm going to present is about uh, having different, uh, having um, one, more than one PGD for the, con uh, for the kernel in some contexts. So yeah, uh, the, the use case we have for that have been one, which is already used, that's the PTI, which has been fixing the, the meltdown issue where uh, the kernel and mapping has been restricted so that uh, we, could, we could fix that issue. Uh, what I'm going to, to talk ab more about is uh, this idea of address space isolation and in particular this uh, application, the KVM. Another um, idea uh, that has been proposed by Amazon is to have a process local memory. So you've got memory specific to a process which is not accessible from the other process from the kernel. And Mike is uh, going to, to talk about uh, another idea which is somewhat related to the previous one, to have a local memory but uh, for a namespace, a particular na namespace like the network namespace. So first, uh, let's start with uh, address space isolation, which is more complex. So we know from Spectrum Meltdown that da data can link between Zibling uh, CPU April thread like in L1TF and NDS. And so that's a major issue for virtualization because this sort of guest guest attacks. So you've got two VM, different VM running on the same uh, CPU core. You can possibly see data from the other VM. And also a guest to host attack. So uh, a thread running in the VM while the other is in the kernel, you can possibly attack the kernel from there. The basic mitigation is just disabling CPU hyperthreading, but yeah, this has significant impact on performance. So the idea was, can, can we try to run something? So keep hyperthread, run something in one thread and run something else in a secure environment in another thread. So this original uh, idea was proposed by uh, Liran, which is uh, working on, uh, on Oracle on the Oracle Cloud. The idea is to define a new page table with limited mappings, um, typically with no secret and no sensitive data. You've got two, two approach to do that. You can either start from the full kernel and you remove mapping and, and you remove some, some of the mapping, or start from blank page table and you add uh, the mapping until you have what you need. Um, uh, Liran initial proposal was to remove mappings, but uh, I've gone the other way to add mapping up because uh, I was fearing there could be some synchronization issue if you start from the full uh, and you remove something and something is changing in the initial kernel mapping. So once you have this um, limited uh, page table, the idea is you switch to that a page table explicitly, so what we call an ASI enter. And from this point, you are running, hopefully, with non-sensitive data. When you are done, you switch back and it returns to the full kernel page table. Uh, for example, if, if you're just done and you need to, to continue your work or your work is requiring uh, full access to the kernel. There are other cases where you are going to, full, uh, to switch back, which are implicit. Um, this is when you get an interrupt because you will need to process the interrupt, an exception or a contest switch. In that case, we'll also switch back to the full kernel page table. So the minimum page table I was able to create um, was uh, needed really to include some core kernel mapping. So that's the kernel text so that you can execute your code. Uh, the GTD so that you can yeah, process the exception and interrupt and a stack. And the simplest way to do that is to get the current stack map. And, and that way with this minimum mappings, you can enter ISI, run some code just until some point, a exit ISI and a process the interrupt. Um, the way it is implemented also uh, currently is the problem if you are reaching some point, uh, some data which is not mapped, you're going to get a page fault. So there is a special processing in the page fault handler 
where it's going to switch to the, um, so this is an, uh, an exception, so you are going to switch to a full kernel page table, but we will retry the full the fault with the, f uh, the full kernel page, page table. So if, if that's just a missing mapping in your uh, a, a page table, then it's going to retry and hopefully work. Otherwise, yeah, that's, uh, that's a kernel fault. Um, there was optional mapping, but it's they are not mandatory for uh, just entering and exiting ASI, uh, but most of the time you will need it if you have fairly um, some code to run because most of the code are going to use that. So you've got the stack canary that you need for some function. Uh, often you will need to access CPU, um, CPU variables, so you need a CPU offset, uh, and sometimes you need also the, the current stack to be accessible. But the idea is that you are going to map what you need uh, and you try not to map any secrets of sensitive data in that address space. So uh, this is something I have applied to KVM. And uh, the idea is to run ASI with uh, a KVM virtual machine. So um, you will have the KVM run IR tool invoked, uh, usually by QM QMU. So you enter the KVM address space you run your VM, so you do the VM enter, so at this point you're running with this uh, restricted address space. When you exit, you're still um, on this restricted ad address space, and the goal is to process the VM exit handler with the, uh, with the ASI. So that way, if you've got everything mapped correctly so that you can process uh, the VM exit handler, you can loop and run your entire virtual machine with on this restricted address space. So, um, so the good thing is that it protects you from um, guest to host attack because when you're, if you have guests running and you have a uh, sibling thread, then if it tries to attack the, the, the host, it will see, um, yeah, um, non-sensitive data. Um, so in that case, the ASI page table has um, mapping limited to the, to the particular guests you are running. So you need to map the KVM module, obviously, uh, in addition to other data and some data specific to, um, to the guests you want to run. So there's different way to implement this. Either you, you have data specific to your guests or um, the second version I've done, I've, I had only um, data specific to the uh, vCPU. So as I said, this is medication um, for uh, attack between, between guest and host. Um, the, the thing is that when you exit ASI, if you exit ASI, you're not secure anymore. So you need to make the other thread either. So this is the point where we need to, to some interaction with, uh, with the scheduler or something like uh, call scheduling to make sure that we exit when we exit ASI, we make sure that the, the other thread running in the VM is going to be either or at least exit, exit the VM. Um, benefits, so yeah, this prevents the guest to, to host attack. This prevents also guest to guest attack through, through the host. So if you attack the host, you won't see any data from uh, other guests. Um, but this is only valid when ASI page table is effectively in use. So as, as, as I was saying, as soon as you exit, you need to exit the, you need to make sure that the other thread is running uh, something uh, where you cannot attack your kernel. So exit the, exit the, exit the VM. Um, and this is where we need some interact. This is something we haven't implemented yet, but we will need some uh, either interaction with the scheduler or part of the code scheduler to make sure uh, there's no issue. Uh, the limitation is that it doesn't prevent the guest-to-guest -guest attack. So if you get two VM running on the same uh, sibling, uh, I prefer they can still attack each other. Um, but there is a simple um, solution for that is to pin each VM to a distinct CPU core. I think that's a reasonable uh, expectation if you want to have some um, good performance for your VM. Um, so ASI is currently is implemented as a generic framework, but the only use case we have so far is only for KVM. 
So I, we couldn't think of any other use case at the moment. So if anyone has an idea of what it would be useful to, feel free to, to connect with me. Uh, another issue, it's, it's difficult to identify all the code to map. So currently, uh, when some code is on map and you need it while running ASI, it's going to page fault. And we have a page fault handler which is going to dump the stack where the fault is appearing. Uh, this was uh, yeah, an original idea from before. And this worked pretty well because you, you run your stuff, you got a stack, you can identify from the stack the data which is missing, you map it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's taking a long time and you, you don't know where, uh, if you are going to, to go through all the flow of everything. Um, the mapping granularity is an issue too because it's limited to 4K. So if you've got a small buffer to, to map which is less than 4K, yeah. I, I was just going to say there was an extension to that as well, that you didn't actually have to necessarily map it through. You could just take the fault, switch to the higher table, and that's when you trigger the uh, isolation for the hyperthread. So you can do it transparently, runtime as well as statically. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the mapping granularity is an issue because uh, it's limited to 4K. So if you've got a smaller buffer to, to map, you are going to map the entire page and you are going to leak the adj adj adjacent data. So um, if, if you get sensitive data next your, to your non-sensitive data, they can leak. Um, there is some interaction with the memory allocation. <coughs> I haven't investigated yet because we are not mapping everything. So if you do a malloc, it's going to go deep down the stack and look at the slab slab. And most of the time it's not mapped, so it's going to fault. Uh, every time it's going to have an allocation and we will exit ASI at this time. And we need also some integration with the scheduler as I was mentioning uh, to, to interact with the Zibling upper thread when we are uh, entering or exiting ASI to know what we can schedule on the, on the, other, on the other thread. And another point is we have an assess performance at the moment, so there is at least one uh, update us of the ACR free register in addition to what we have uh, when running the syscall. So um, another approach uh, which was proposed by uh, Julian and Marius from uh, Amazon is to have <coughs> some kernel data non-globally visible. So this is another way to tweak the, the kernel page table. Uh, and make these some data only visible in the context of a specified process. Actually, there was a comment about that. It's, it's more precisely about a, spe a specified MM. So for MM, um, you would have a specific region where you store your data. And secrets, in that case, should be explicitly stored in that region. You, this, this prevents other process basically from peeking at some secret you can have an, in a process from the kernel. So the addition of a private um, memory mapping is done um, to the process kernel page table. So it's add a new exclusive PGD entry and then you can, you can do, uh, use some memory specific um, function to allocate, uh, to allocate the, uh, the, uh, the memory in that PGD and then you can store your data. So only the allocation the way you allocate your memory is going to change and you will have only this process for this memory. Also, the memory you allocate is uh, removed from the direct map so that it cannot be uh, accessed from the regular kernel address space. So this was also used for, uh, for KVM uh, to store KVM guest data in the process lo local memory instead of uh, in the regular kernel page table. So you, you store the general purpose register, FPU register, uh, register, things like that. So the good thing is this prevent KVM in the kernel from sharing data among all the guests. And that way you can prevent guest to guest attack through those. So if you got uh, a VM, uh, a thread in the guest uh, and another thread in the VM, the VM can attack the host, but it won't see the data from the other host from the other VM. Uh, but uh, it has some limitation too. 
A good benefit is although that the implementation is very simple com compared to ASI, uh, but it doesn't prevent the guest-to-guest -guest attack. That's the same thing. You should pin your, your, your VM to different CPU core. And the guest-to-host attack is still possible to collect non-guest uh, data. So that's a different approach, which is good because it's very, very simple compared to ASI. And I will let Mike continue with uh, a variant of that with uh, namespace local memory. Thanks, Alex. So uh, unlike uh, Amazon and Oracle, guys, we are not trying to solve uh, any class of speculation attacks and do not try improve mitigations. Uh, we are doing a research about how we can make uh, containers more secure in general. And uh, since MMU and the page tables are known to be one of the best protection methods uh, for like uh, since invention of the virtual memory, uh, we are trying to make some, uh, to somehow marry in, in Linux namespaces with other spaces. Uh, the idea is that since uh, many kernel objects inside the, the container or inside the uh, namespace are logically private to that namespace and uh, should not be accessed normally from other namespaces, they could be mapped only for the processes that run in, inside that namespaces. For instance, with the NetNS, uh, the entire networking stack, or at least most of the networking stack internal objects are replicated for each struct net. And uh, they are mostly accessed in the context of the processes that run uh, or inside that net network namespaces, at least for the TX pass, and starting from some point on their X pass. Uh, there are st also structures that uh, <coughs> across uh, namespaces boundaries uh, for, for very simple uh, cases, uh, uh, SK buff, it has to traverse all the namespaces on the way to the actual physical card and all the way, uh, on the way back for the RX path. So uh, we initially what we started to do is uh, looking into adding context switch each time uh, somebody tries to dereference net and S but then we realized it uh, would not fly because it will screw performance completely. And uh, the next, uh, let's say, generation of our attempts to, to do this is to create a, a namespace local memory and uh, to have a PGD pair uh, namespace uh, so that it will have different mappings than initmm PGD. And uh, whenever a process uh, belongs to these namespaces, it will have the namespace specific view of the kernel mappings. Uh, when, uh, and uh, there will be kernel objects that are mapped exclusively in uh, the page tables of that namespace. Uh, what <coughs> so uh, to achieve this, uh, we are going to go through whichever objects are located in the namespace for we are starting with net and s and this and for instance when whenever you allocate object for socket or object for uh, tcp state machine it can be allocated with the specific with the private versions of alloc page and came alloc that uh, uh, whenever a page is allocated from such context is uh, dropped, uh, 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 whenever page, page is allocated with the, let's say additional GFP plug, it is dropped from the direct map and it's not uh, mapped <coughs> in other namespaces and as well as in init and MPGD. So uh, since we were requested by the Columbus committee to make it one coherent talk, and make it a generic framework for aerospace management. And uh, I think uh, during the discussions of uh, one of the versions of ASI patches, uh, uh, Thomas uh, summarized it pretty well as, uh, okay, if we do want to use restricted namespaces, we need some way to create them. We need to take care of context switches and uh, some logic around context management 
if I remember correctly. Uh, just question. a quick question, sorry for interrupting you. Uh, does it mean uh, whenever we are uh, maintaining separate page table for the uh, namespace, we will uh, still uh, map this page into a uh, whole kernel memory because the kernel should be able to access it. No. For example, write back, for example, network drivers. So uh, we, we are thinking that in some points, kernel only <laughs> needs to access the struct page and it would be enough. For instance, if you can DMA, if if it needs to DMA, it doesn't need to access the page itself, the page data itself. It's weird. Uh, and uh, whenever this access will be required, kernel can, ma can make it, can map it back because uh, it we should be able to use enough, uh, we should be able to use struct page or struct page extension to give kernel enough information that this page is uh, coming from a restricted context and to do something with it, it needs special care. Okay, uh, have you analyzed the overhead of that operation? It should start working before we can analyze the cost. So it's a very early stages. I can't tell uh, what will be the implications performance wise and memory wise and everything Maybe wise. Memory. Can you take a mic, Thomas? Basically, it's going to be the same trouble with, uh, as we have with high memory 32 bit machines. Uh, because there you have no direct map for all the user pages and whatever, and you have to uh, uh, temporarily map them in. Uh, that's, that's pretty similar to what you're going to, uh, to, uh, to uh, do. Uh, right. Once, I mean, for the, for the, for the data which is <coughs> only relevant if you are in the context uh, of that namespace and the page table is mapped anyway, I mean, then the kernel can see it. Uh, but if you are in a different context and have, you have to access it, then you have to do the same thing what we do for 32-bit uh, high like came up a, well, came up in France, right? Right. Uh, is the, the question here that we don't know yet to answer is how many such transitions that would be required? I can tell. I, I, no, I mean, uh, when you need to, what are the points when you need to access the data from different context? Pretty much everything. It's pretty much anything which has to do with I.O. Uh, if you if you cannot directly DMA into the page, yes. if, if you have to copy uh, uh, fragments or stuff like that, then you you basically have that thing. Yes. And how much that is that depends on the workload. So it's it's it there's there's no universal answer. Right. You need a crystal ball for that. Yeah, I'll need to make it working for to start benchmarking, right? Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then you still need a crystal ball. Uh, <laughs> I think the bigger problem where you really need a crystal ball is that most kernel data structures refer to other kernel data structures by their address. And that address is not going to be valid in your address space. So you don't even know what memory to map. Uh, probably... Well, uh, at least for the network namespace, for instance, many kernel data structures refer to kernel data structures that live in the same namespace. They do not refer to data stru structures that are outside the namespace. One, so that's what what one cost difference on the isolation for security versus the isolation for namespaces is that on the security front, we do have the choice of pushing them out to the more privileged namespace well, the, sorry, the more privileged page mapping and suspending the other hyperthread versus doing some sort of read proxy through the map, <coughs> which does have a different repeated read cost off the topic Thomas was talking about. It, it also seems like you need to be able to know that you're not repeating the same address in different namespaces, so then you could possibly think you're referring to one data structure and actually be referring to something completely unrelated. You'd rather have it panic than, um, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly the problem I wanted to point out. You can't 
use, reuse the same virtual address. You have to split it up. It it's not going to be the same virtual address. Yeah, because and and the dangerous part is not the private namespace pointing to some other kernel object. The dangerous part is some other kernel object pointing, pointing to, the, into to the, the namespace. namespace. Yes, that's the that's the part you where it really gets scary. Uh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, no objection. <laughs> yeah, have fun watching the explosions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So uh, I'm I'll try colorful. to get back on track, Thomas, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, so since there are different parties doing similar thing and uh, things in the way, and everything uh, starts with a restricted context management context switches and some logic of managing them, we are trying to come up with some a uh, more or less generic framework for. Oh sh. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm running out of battery, so probably I need to recharge. Anyway, <laughs> we are trying to come up with some uh, generic uh, uh, I complicate <laughs> Can you call it this? Sorry about that. Uh, we, we are trying to come up with a more or less generic framework for managing kernel page tables. So what is happening now uh, from uh, uh, struct.mm is the page table. But struct.mm is designed to be representation of user space address space, mostly. Uh, and uh, what I've been trying to do for the last couple of uh, weeks uh, is to decouple actual page table from struct mm and to see what I can get out of it. Uh, then w when it's done, uh, we can introduce uh, methods for cloning and populating a page table on the first page table basis and it most probably will be able to reuse existing copy page range uh, at least the most part of it and free page table and the, the whole MMU gather stuff. Uh, as soon as I can get uh, get it, not dereferencing a mem pointer. So uh, currently, co uh, the only kernel context uh, that is not in it MM PGD uh, is uh, that's actively used is a PTI implementation. Uh, 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 and uh, apparently uh, ASI will create its context uh, when uh, uh, when uh, uh, calling a VM create or vCPU create. And uh, the process local memory and the namespace local memory, the, the page table will be propagated and created uh, at the time of call and share or set an S. Uh, and the problem of creation restricted spacing uh, is technically easy, but uh, another problem which is much more difficult, what to put there and what mappings should be present and what mappings can we exclude from them. Uh, it's completely open question, but uh, I've started to see how to implement the machinery to uh, make, uh, say, PTI and ASI use the same mechanism for creation of the page tables instead of uh, having like five ten of them or whatever. And the context switches, uh, which is uh, the third part, uh, for ESI uh, it's very similar to PTI and uh, I presume it could be done with the same uh, uh, assembler magic and alternatives. Uh, probably ASI would be able to use the same trick as PTI does and just clone PGD page with bit flips and uh, make it order order two page instead of order one. Uh, uh, for the process local memory and for the namespace local memory, the context switches are implicit uh, because the process already has its PGD 
is the restricted mapping. So whenever we call the switch, do we get the restricted mapping matrix? So this is kind of the beginning of what I'm doing. Uh, I added the struct page table with a few fields. I don't know what else would be required yet, uh, but it mostly covers uh, the the things that are live currently in MM struct and uh, are used by page table management primitives uh, uh, throughout the, the code. And the <coughs> what I currently have is I have uh, the page table as uh, aggregated inside the mem struct. Uh, probably eventually I'll make it a pointer. Uh, there is uh, quite a few issues I've seen with the first approach and with the second one. Uh, time will uh, in some time will I'll have better idea what is better. But uh, the trouble with having a page table aggregated inside the mem struct. Uh, it somewhat lacks the flexibility and probably we just to repeat using MM struct for kernel page tables as well and just don't use the whole VMA and MAPSEM, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it will definitely save lots of churn, but it's less correct semantically from my point of view. Uh, I can say I have a strong opinion here at the moment, maybe in two, three weeks or so. <laughs> Uh, but uh, if we make it a pointer, uh, first uh, it breaks the randomization of uh, struct mm. Uh, and next, uh, it will need more care if when allocating and freeing, and it will require additional allocation for allocation of the memory management struct, and uh, it should be followed by um, allocation of the page table. But on the other hand, uh, Whenever we create a kernel page table that is not uh, init page table, uh, we'll get proper uh, proper uh, page table object, and we not have to deal with the uh, mm struct. Now, to when I was playing with all these uh, things, I found that uh, one of the pain points uh, is freeing actually the page table, and especially when it, when it shares some of uh, lower levels with the uh, init MMPGD. Uh, so either you need to track all the pages that were allocated for restricted page table, or you need to have some other mechanism to allow this uh, uh, to to be able to free page table without screwing uh, the init MMPGD. So what I was thinking is that we have like two unsigned logs in struct page, which are not used surprisingly uh, for the page table pages. Whenever, whenever page type is page table, we have two unsigned logs. And these can be used to track page tables allocated for the restricted context and then uh, freeing them would be simple traversal of the page table free. And if it's page table restricted, you free. If it's shared, you don't free. And it's simple. Uh, one uh, minor issue, page table uh, flag is not set for every page table in the kernel, at least at x86. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, the initial page tables that come from very early mapping uh, never marked as page tables afterwards. So and then per context allocations I've been looking to uh, is an addition of a GFP flag that uh, will say, okay, we want this page drop from direct map. And uh, then it can be extended to slab caches as well. And uh, whenever slab cache would be marked as uh, with some flag, I call it, it exclusive for now because private is overloaded in many places anyway. Uh, the every allocation from that slab cache will be dropped into direct map and then it would be seen only in the allocating context. Uh, and whenever the page needs to be make map accessed from other context, it needs to be mapped back with something like 
came up or set memory present, set memory not present. Uh, and another thing that is required for extending KMALOC with these private or exclusive allocations uh, is the is creation of a, a malloc cache that is specific to certain other space, pretty much like C group do for C group specific caches, in order in order not to mix uh, objects from different other spaces in the same uh, pages. So whenever first time uh, whenever first time a request for private KMALOC uh, comes into or whatever, <coughs> it creates a new cache that is a child object of a parent cache, for, for instance, a KMALOC 1K and KMALOC 1K1. And then uh, everything is allocated from the pages belonging to that uh, cache and the, and the, it, the mappings remain in the allocating context. Uh, again, here we'll have uh, out of context accesses, for instance, slab debugging and the uh, slab, uh, slab puts some of its metadata inside the page itself and uh, it's not enough to use struct page for slab. So we'll need to adjust accordingly uh, and we'll get, we'll get performance hit from there as well. Need to see how much it is uh, for the crystal ball workload. Another idea actually, James <coughs> ran away. Uh, uh, another idea was James uh, to have uh, a new MMAP um, advice flags that allow you to create uh, an area that is visible only in the context of certain pro pro process and then uh, do something like open and decrypt file, uh, read data into the such areas that is uh, dropped from the direct map and you can actually store secrets in such areas. I haven't, I haven't done anything in that direction yet. Uh, it seems not too hard to implement it, but there's surely tiny bits which I missed. So. So um, I think we we can say that reducing the, the kernel address space mapping can help reduce the scope of some attacks, um, especially on the cloud environment and virtualization. And uh, what we have found out is also is that um, there's probably some way to, to improve the way um, management of page table is done and, and, and management of context is done. Um, so what we are proposing is first, um, go on and improve this, this function which are used for um, managing page table and managing context. Um, so that's the, we improve what's already there, but we also provide some building blocks to, to the extension uh, we think could be, could be useful. Um, then the next step would be to, to um, continue with this uh, kind of local memory, either it is process or namespace local memory. It was also suggested it c the process local memory could be used to refactor the LTD in the K KPI case. So that can be something useful. Um, for ASI, uh, there's still many others uh, before ASI is near production ready. Uh, there's a lot more investigation I need to do. Uh, there's also the question of the complexity with the benefits that's really need to investigate. So the idea is continue some evaluation around ASI and see if we can uh, find out and build something fr from it. Okay, it's all the way up. Yeah, and the appendix would just have yeah, some, yeah, yeah, references to different blogs and uh, RFC that have been submitted so far. That's all. Uh, if anybody wants to go to lunch, uh, <laughs> yeah, otherwise we can take I questions. think we've run out, yes. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.